It's uh, it is a big deal. Clearly, um, it's uh, it's associated with a lot of uncertainty, and as we all know, businesses do not like uncertainty. Um, and for some companies and some sectors, like pharmaceuticals or you know car manufacturers, clearly it ranks as one of the big issues. However, it's easy to overstate the uh, the importance of Brexit in the grand scheme of things. I mean, if you are a consumer products or retailer uh, firm at the moment, you are really worried about just the wider trends on the high street. If you're an automotive maker, I mean, you have four or five dif different disruptions from, you know, the uh, decline of diesel to change your consumer habits that probably rank significantly higher than Brexit on a medium term basis. It's just the immediacy and the level of uncertainty that is so difficult for business to handle. Well, let's talk about both immediacy and uncertainty. Since, let's say, December, there's been quite a clear indication that no deal was a possibility. The minute that deal was negotiated between the UK and the EU, there were members of this building behind you saying, we have a problem with it. If you're a business planning for that possibility that on March 29th, the UK would crash out of Europe, and then suddenly, last week you're told, well, it won't be March 29th, it might be April the 12th. How does that affect your ability to plan for that? Um, it's, it's a, as I always say, it's a bit of a double-edged sword, right? Because for some companies that have struggled with, uh, with the, the deadline, uh, it can be welcome news. I mean, we saw quite a few companies that we work with having troubles kind of with some of the very operational mitigating steps that they would have to take to be ready for no-deal Brexit around systems, around, uh, you know, making sure they had an EU entity in place, around being able to trade across a customs border. But for others, it's just prolonging the uncertainty and prolonging the deadlock. I mean, we saw last night here in Parliament that uh, it's basically reinforced the fact that uh, there is no majority here for anything. So you have to ha take out another two weeks with the possibility of a no deal at the end of those two weeks, for example, when it comes to stock building, where uh, companies now have to hold an additional two weeks, but not sure exactly for how long that will go on for, etc. So, so it is a double-edged sword for some companies. They get an extra two, two weeks' time, but I think universally no one likes this limbo, this almost permanent state of limbo that we're now in. So let's talk about this limbo, this uncertainty. You have eight options laid before lawmakers last night. From a business's perspective, they obviously have different implications, but from a short-term perspective, it's just a question of no deal or transition same terms over the next month or two, right, isn't it? It sort of is. I mean, it, it is very much, in the short term, you can make pos possibly argument that it's a little bit binary, right? Because either you have a no deal on the 12th of April uh, or you move into this longer extension or particularly sort of, or potentially even a longer transition period. So it is a bit binary, but, but it's sort of this, if, if you think about how you plan for no scenario for business, there are certain actions that you have to take, which involves quite a bit of cost potentially. You know, standing up a customs function, moving certain functions near 27 entity that you don't necessarily have to do in, in, in other Brexit scenarios. Like if you have a softer Brexit, like customs union, for example, the border between the UK and the EU, the customs border between the UK and the EU will be very light or potentially even virtual. And therefore, you don't have to invest so much money in, in, in your customs capability. And it's that balancing act that is so difficult for firms and businesses to deal with, on the one hand being ready for no deal, but then naturally you don't want to spend money on outcomes that may not materialize. And the longer this uncertainty goes on, the more money companies will potentially spend on, well, things that will not happen in the end, you know? So I think that is the challenge that they all have. And underpinning all of that as well, you have a bit of the wider political uncertainty. We saw what the Prime Minister was saying yesterday about her potential departure date, which of course throws out the prospect as well of a potential general election, you know? The probability of that has probably gone up, uh, in the back, on the back of that announcement. So you also have not only the Brexit outcomes you have to think about, but also the underpinning political uncertainty and the potential for changing government, for example, which companies are also considering at the moment. So it's almost like the perfect mix, if you will, or rather the perfect storm in terms of the difficulty in planning for this from a business perspective. One final question. If you listen to what we've heard from the alphabet soup of business lobby groups, the IOD, the CBI, the BCC, the FSB, They've all said uncertainty is the real enemy here. And they've been, until now, able to pin that uncertainty on the Prime Minister, yeah. on the government. Suddenly, Parliament gets involved yesterday, and some people say, well, maybe this is going to find a solution. As of right now, we haven't seen that. Is the frustration that you presumably have heard from people you've been consulting with likely to translate to politics more broadly rather than just focused on the government's lack of preparedness, do you think? 
It was this uh, idea, and, and business has naturally struggled to keep up with all the backs, back and forth in, involved in this, right? I mean, there's an element of, of, of getting sort of a whiplash injury from all, from all of these okay. developments of the, last, of the last months, really. But it was this view that if, par if only Parliament can take control, can take control, you know, sense will prevail. But as we just saw, right, and we have seen this trend for the last few weeks, the gridlock has only moved from, you know, from number from, from, from number ten down the street to cabinet. Now to Parliament, so so you know it's just moving, it's transferring the gridlock, if you will. So so I think this frustration in politics more widely, you know, and and but again, big picture here is that Brexit is a big deal for businesses, but you see a political uncertainty elsewhere in the world, you know, track the tr trade wars, for example, uh, take some of the political challenge that we see in Europe, uh, etc. So it's not a UK specific phenomenon, but I do think at this point in time, UK politicians are, are probably leading leading the pack in terms of causing frustration for business. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersetti and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.